Piscator. Hey everyone and welcome to Piscator UK. Well you join me back on the shore uh, this afternoon and I'm going to be chasing sea trout again. It's a lovely afternoon, the water conditions is a bit calm, it's almost like a mirror in some places and I'm going with my trusted bombarder setup. If you're new to the channel guys and you haven't seen any of my bombarder fishing before I'll leave a link in the description and I did a video there answering viewers questions what I look for in a new venue or any venue and how I set up the bombarder at the end of the video. Now my bombarder setup is pretty much the same every time I fish the only difference being I may put on a heavier bombarder or a lighter bombarder. The bombarder that I've got on at the moment is a 20 gram bombarder and I'm using a feeder rod today. Uh, I like the feeder rod because purely because of its lightness. Some people don't like a feeder rod because it's too sensitive in the tip and some say that you don't get good hookups. Uh, the sea trout for me, they hit that hard whether you're using a bait, a fly or a plastic, a soft plastic. Uh, the sea trout hit that hard that they almost hook themselves and I'm using a circle hook. So I'm not really going to be striking into the fish as such, it's more just lifting the line into the fish rather than a, a full on strike. I mentioned a circle hook there, I'm going to be fishing a bait today, a strip bait and the bait I've chosen is a sand deal, it's a sand deal fillet and you can use a multitude of different uh, strip baits, mackerel, heron, bluey, etc, etc. The reason I like the sand eel is they're all sort of uniform, same size, they're nice slithers, there's no extra cutting. You do have to fillet them right enough, which can be fiddly, but I'll go through that process uh, later on in the session. But what I really want to show today is just a bit of versatility in the bombarda. It is a versatile method uh, to catch game fish. Uh, and bass as well and I just wanted to show that today uh, using something different taking away the fly I may go into the fly uh, later on not the fly rod fishing the fly on the bombarder which I like to use something like a clouser minnow that's got a bit of action because of the, the weight in the head of the clouser minnow we'll get a bait in the water and hopefully we can catch one of these stunning hard fighting sea trout Hey guys, so a bit of makeup to the area here. We've got a nice weed bank around the, the shore, but most of the bottom here is just sandy. Don't know if you can make that out on camera, but it's just sand. I've got I've got a little weed bank here, but stretches out to a mussel bed, and then there's another mussel bed further out where my rod's pointing and I'm going to be casting around these areas casting up the weed lines and like I said, most of my time my bait's going to be over sand because of that I can work the bombarda a little bit slower I'm not going to get hung up on much and because I've got the circle hook as well uh, I do find that you do get hung up less on rocks, uh, mussels etc that's another reason I like the circle hook so first cast. Now as I said it is a bit glassy today and that's another reason that I do like the bombarder is because you can cast a nice distance with it. Because of the distance you can get on a bombarder you're sort of casting over the fish or where you think the fish might be and especially if it's in conditions like this where it's flat cam there's no movement on the water then you can cast over your fish and then retrieve to where you think the fish are uh, rather than spooking them, casting on top of them that's my theory anyway just try a little bit closer to that weed bank yeah. fishing with the, the strip bait I don't want to power the cast too much 
because the strip bait is just going to end up curling round the hook and it's not going to flow through the water nice and naturally. Now you are trying to imitate a bait fish as such and you just don't want it curling round the hook and spinning up the line. I'm always keeping my eyes open for moving fish so that I can maybe try and cover it. I'm still fishing the bombarda exactly the same way as I would any other fly or lure and that's stopping the bombarda before it hits the surface of the water just to get that turnover so the bait falls to the back of the bombarda and doesn't tangle around the bombarda as it hits the surface of the water. So how I like to prepare the sand eel strips or like I said you can use mackerel, heron, bluey. I prefer to use frozen sand eels and I use a medium sized sand eel and it gives you this size fillet which is probably about 10-11 centimetres long. I take the sand eels out the freezer and I let them defrost just a little bit so they're still semi frozen. That way when it comes to filleting they're really easy to fill it. If you let them defrost totally and they're all soft uh, you will find it much more difficult to fill it the sand eel. Now obviously if you're using mackerel etc it's a lot easier you just cut them into strips strips of the size that you want bluey, heron etc. Once I've got the sand eels filleted dab off any excess moisture and I then prepare another layer of paper towel. I put a thin layer of coarse sea salt onto the paper towel. I then layer the fillets, the sand eel fillets or macro fillets on top of the coarse sea salt. Nicely spaced out, not touching. And then I put a layer of sea salt over the top. I normally put a plate or something on top just to flatten them out and I put them in the fridge overnight or 24 hours and then the fillets are nicely firmed up they're easier to put on your hook and also when you're out on a fishing session they don't deteriorate through the day and you can fish with them all day because of the salt uh, the moisture's been obviously withdrawn from the fillets it just makes for a better bait fillet to handle and to fish with and obviously they last longer and once they're done you can keep them in the freezer for as long as you want you can you know prepare batches ahead of time so they're ready for your season and also when you finish your session, if you've got, so if you're going on a session, you take how many fillets you think you're going to use, and if you overdo it, take too much. Because of the sea salt and the moisture that's been obviously taken out of the fillets, they do last. So you can go home, you got any fillets left over, pop them back in the freezer, and they're ready for your next session. So a versatile bait to use just by salting them and I got that little tip from Gordon from Angling360. Uh, I'd, I'd heard about it before, salting your bait, uh, but he, he told me more about it and that's what I tried. Normally I would just use frozen fillets, but like I said, they don't last on the hook as long, uh, they deteriorate through the day depending on the weather conditions, so if it's warm and sunny, you know, they're, they're not going to last you the session. So that's probably about 15 casts I've had with that one bait and it's holding up beautifully. Just because of the salt content, it's really stiffened the flesh up. Um, with fishing a strip bait like this, obviously you need to consider the area you, that you're fishing in terms of how you're going to retrieve it. If I was fishing on more muscle bedded areas, more likely to be snagged up, then I wouldn't be working it as slow as how I'm working it. Because I'm fishing mostly sand, I can afford to just, you know, work it really slowly. So 
So if you were fishing over mussel beds or over rocks, then just keep the bombarda and your bait off the bottom. Otherwise you'll just run into trouble and get snagged up. A little bite there, but I think it's a flounder. Maybe a flounder. Don't know. Yeah, I just think with the calm water, the bait strips is maybe not the way to go. I don't know. Or maybe it just needs to be fished a little bit slower. That was weird, just that little breeze showed up and so did the fish and that was another take. I don't think it's big. I'm just going to let it chew on it. Mm, a baby trout. <laughs> That's the smallest one of the year. Circle hook. Let's get the four steps with this and it should come right out. There we go. Yeah, just little ones following that there. So that was a really slow retrieve. Pausing it. They were taking it on the pause. But yeah, obviously tiny fish. Well the tide has turned now. The tide's on its way in. And it's wet just really quiet, no fish moving. And just when the tide started to turn, there was a few fish moving, but the little breeze has gone off the water for the time being and it's just really calm. Uh, I don't know if that's having an impact. I think it is. Yeah, so I've been switching up my flies on the sandy pattern just now, but I tried different clouds and minnow patterns. Black and white, red and white, blue and white. Nothing. I had a couple of follows, a couple of sort of swirls just as I, I lifted the bombard out of the water. But no takes, no hits. I'm going to stick with the sand eel. It's, uh, just got real confidence in it when it. Times are hard. And times are hard at the moment just because it's so calm. But once the tide starts running a bit faster, hopefully that will bring in some fresh fish. And what fish I have seen on the surface, they just look really small. Which is good to see. It's good to see so many small fish as well. Yes, that is the future. There's a fish moved out there. Should be able to cover that with the next cast. That's a fish. 
as oh, that's a nice fish. Looks really dark. Try and keep it out of the shallows actually. There's a lot of kelp around some rocks there. This this doesn't even feel like it's woken up for the size of it. I think by the colour of it. I don't think it's been in the water long, in the salt water that is. Not even wanting to get his head up. Heading for the shallows. And it's showing its power now. It's coming right for me. Isn't that just a beautiful sound? <laughs> oh, powerful fish. Come on. It's not tiring, that's for sure. Oh, I thought it was going to be ready there. Yeah. 
can get his head up. Yes. Oh. Oh, beauty. Beautiful Scottish estuary sea trout. We'll get this guy back. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> What a fish. Certainly my biggest one of the season. I oh, made up with that. Easy five pound. Oh. So made up with that guys. Especially after losing that last big one. I don't think that was quite as big, but it certainly gave a fantastic fight. Ah, oh, just amazing. And one of my favourite flies, the blue and white sand eel pattern. It went really difficult and it never fails to catch a fish when times are hard. It's flat cam and I was just bringing that into the shallows. I probably had about another three reel turns to go. And it walloped it, absolutely walloped that. It didn't fight at first, it just meandered about and then it sort of woke up and it wasn't actually as dark as I thought it was going to be. Its back was a bit dark. Uh, not brilliant silver. Oh, absolutely amazing. Whew. We'll see if we can get another one. Fish on guys. Ah, uh, the same size as yours I think. And the sand you'll fill it. It's a feisty wee fish. Sea trout and the sand deal for it. That's three on that. Yeah, love this sand fish. Thank you, buddy. Try my chat, um, I look at a, a lure. I managed to get that. Beautiful. Stunning, isn't it?
Sorry for gate crashing your channel, Biggie. <laughs> no worries.